Good morning, Pequay Valley. I'm Hope Fisher, and today I'll be covering national news. This Wednesday, March 21st, a 23-year-old male bomber from Austin, Texas died. He released a 25-minute video of his confession of placing the package bombs. However, the video does not include his motive behind leaving the packages. This is leaving authorities questioning why he did it. Altogether, families in Austin are relieved that the bombings will finally stop, although police are still cautioning there may still be packages in the mail. Now to Frank with International News. Hi, I'm Frank and this week in International. Russian President Vladimir Putin was re-elected for another six years after the Russian presidential elections on Sunday. His victory came after a landslide when a 70% of the votes to his name. Some experts predict his rule in Russia will last until he eventually dies, making him the longest surviving serving leader of Russia since Joseph Stalin. Now to Nickel Local. Hi, I'm Nick, and this week in Local, there was a $456.7 million lottery ticket winner in Mannheim. The winning ticket was sold at a local speedway in Mannheim. This is the largest jackpot the Pennsylvania Lottery has ever awarded, as well as our state's 18th Powerball jackpot. If the winner chooses to take a lump sum of cash, payment, they will get over $270 million. Now to Tim with politics. Good morning. I'm Tim, and this week in politics, President Trump released the tariffs that he's implementing for China this Thursday. The effect of these are yet to be felt, but taxes on the Chinese products certainly won't help the trade relations with them. China has already threatened counter-tariffing goods from the United States, meaning a decrease in sales of American products over in China. Trump remains adamant in his American First policy, insisting that this will be a good thing for America. That's our biggest story in politics this week. Now to Luke with business. Hi, my name is Luke and this week in business we will be talking about the Facebook scandal. After several days of silence, CEO Mark Zuckerberg finally makes his first public statement of the incident. The scandal states that the data of 50 million Americans' personal data has been improperly used for political strategies. We have a responsibility to protect your data. If we can't, then we don't deserve to serve you, said Zuckerberg. This goes to show how horrible the company feels about this incident. Zuckerberg said the company has already started to change rules that enabled the breach. Also, he said there is more to do and they're going to step up to fix it. Now to Ariella with science. Hi, I'm Ariella and today in Science News, a self-driving Uber car hit and killed a pedestrian on Sunday night at 10 p.m. The Uber car was headed north when 49-year-old Elaine Herzberg was struck while walking outside of a crosswalk. After the crash, Herzberg was taken to the hospital where she dies from her injuries. Ten police say that the Uber car was in autonomous mode at the time of the crash. The vehicle operator was the only person in the car at the time. An Uber spokesperson told ABC 15 that they are aware of the situation and they are cooperating with the authorities. Because of the incident, Uber has paused self-driving operations in Phoenix, San Francisco, and Toronto. As of now, the police investigation is still active. Now to John with sports. I'm John, and this week in sports we will be talking about one of the biggest upsets in sports history. During the first round of March Madness, the 16-seeded UMBC Retrievers defeated number one seeded Virginia. This is the first time in history of March Madness that a 16-seeded team has beat a one-seeded team. The previous matchups between these two seeds was 0-135, with the higher ranked team becoming victorious. UMBC's story unfortunately ended in their second game, but will nevertheless go down in history. Hi, I'm Amira with this week's entertainment news. Dwayne Johnson graciously received a Baywatch Razzie Award. A Razzie Award is an award for the year's worst films. The Rock accepted the fact that the movie Baywatch was subpar. He says that the movie was so bad that they actually had to create another category titled a movie so bad that you end up liking it. That's all for this week's news.